coming to up close. Tonight we'll be studying the case of The Falcon and the Snowman, Christopher Boyce and Andrew Dalton Lee. This occurred in 1977. It was considered one of the worst breaches of security in United States history. Some people debate this. Christopher Boyce worked for the TRW Corporation. He worked in an area called the Black Vault. His father was head of security at McDonnell Douglas. At 21, Christopher Boyce had one of the highest security clearances in the United States. He handled extremely classified documents for the TRW Corporation. TRW is our main supplier of satellites. It's also owned and operated solely by the CIA. You said in a phone interview on, on CNN that if you had to do it all over again, you wouldn't do it. What changed your mind? The greatest thing that you have uh, in this world is your own life. And uh, my actions caused me to lose uh, a quarter century of my life. Christopher Boyce was actually a quite impressive young man. He was president of his class in elementary school. He was captain of the debating team. His grade point average was about an A. Although after graduating high school, he seemed to flounder in college and drifted aimlessly until the age of 21. Uh, many, many years of that was in solitary confinement and it was tough. And I don't believe that I could again destroy my own life or such a large segment of it like like I did. It's... Boyce was receiving twixes from Langley, Virginia from the CIA and he began reading them. He was shocked by what he saw. He felt that by selling documents to the Russians through the Mexican embassy would be a way to get back at them. For three years he and Andrew Dalton Lee sold documents to the Russians. The project that they were arrested on was called Pyramider. People have debated whether this project was actually that classified or worthless. Some people feel the Pyramider project was out of date. There's only one group of people who know exactly what happened, and those are the Russians. This is the same embassy that Lee Harvey Oswald also went to. This is one of the most surveilled embassies in the world. How could they have gotten away with this for three years? Was this a way of the United States spreading disinformation? Once again, there's only one group of people that know, and those would be the Russians and the KGB. The reason for their code names, the Falcon and the Snowman, were due to the fact that Boyce was very heavily involved in the ancient art of falconry, using falcons to hunt with. Andrew Dalton Lee was a heavy drug dealer and was in very serious trouble with the law. He was dealing heroin and was given the name the Snowman. Both young men lived in the affluent community of Palos Verdes. Andrew Dalton Lee's father was a prominent doctor. At a party one night at Lee's house, both were discussing how disillusioned they were with the United States. Lee was facing quite a bit of time and had decided this was a good way to escape. So you said that you said that you thought you were aiding your country. Bradley Manning said that he was aiding his country as well as Edward Snowden. What would you say now to someone who has access to that sensitive information and they're on the threshold of deciding whether to release it with the thought that they would be aiding their country? What would you tell that person about your own life experience? I would tell them that they ought to go where they're going to stay. Snowden should have went to Venezuela or to Ecuador, not, you know, started off on a junket around the world. When sentenced, Boyce was given 40 years. Andrew Dalton Lee was given life. Both have been released from prison. Christopher Boyce had actually escaped from the Lompoc facility and was on the run for a year and a half under the name Jim Nanchak and Sean Hennessy. He was committing bank robberies to survive. He lived in the Idaho area, Sand Point. To be sentenced to prison, you, you need to be able to, to at least exist and, and, uh, and not you know, be murdered. I, the people were being murdered all around me. And uh, it was a regular gladiator school where I was. So 
I escaped to save my life, and I, it's a story that I wanted to tell. To be sentenced to prison, you, you need to be able to, to at least exist and, and, uh, and not, you know, be murdered. I, the people were being murdered all around me. This is the same embassy that Lee Harvey Oswald also went to. The project that they were arrested on was called Pyramider. This program in Australia, I mean, that you were, to mix metaphors once again, a David looking for a Goliath, and you decided it would be the U.S. government. I must confess that there you have a you probably hit the nail squarely on the head there. Uh, I was probably looking for any excuse to tilt windmills, and that's a personal flaw I have. I uh, I've certainly burned my fingers doing it, but uh, I was certainly. Uh, moved to do it by what I watched on the Twixes, the encrypted Twixes, about uh, our uh, intervention in Australian domestic politics. But I think you're right. I was, I was looking for windmills and uh, in the process destroyed 25 years of my life. Since the Boyce and Lee case in 1977, there have been espionage cases in the United States that have far surpassed this one. The Ames case and the Walker case to mention a few. It's doubtful anyone will know just how many people died because of John Walker's espionage. That's the conclusion to our show tonight. I'm Andrew West. Thank you for viewing and good night.